I've got an interesting product to show you today. Uh, this is the Oroco CDH9N USB-C Hub, and it offers all of the features you'd usually expect from a hub. You've got additional USB ports, HDMI, Ethernet, and the obligatory card readers. Uh, but it has a neat additional feature, and that is an M2 SSD expansion slot. This allows you to put an NVMe drive into the hub and enjoy fast external storage along with those extra ports. So instead of carrying around a USB hub and an external drive, you can take just one device, but is that better? We always like to do a full disclosure with product reviews, especially when we are sent a free sample of the product. Uh, Oroco sent this over without charge, uh, but they don't get to see the review before it goes live, and they don't get to change anything that we say. And I think it's worth saying that the cost of making a review video like this is always much greater than the value of the item that we receive, uh, especially in this case, since uh, I went out and bought an SSD specifically to test with this hub. Uh, we review products because we think they might be of interest to you guys. And I think this product will certainly be of interest to many tech lovers and laptop owners. Now, if you've got the latest Apple MacBook Pro, then of course you'll be enjoying those ports that Apple has kindly given us back. Uh, but there's still no Ethernet or USB Type-A, so we still have to embrace the dongle life to a certain degree. And of course, if you've got a previous generation MacBook or a lot of PC Ultrabooks now, uh, then you've only got USB Type-C ports. So a hub like this is really useful. Now this particular hub is compatible with Mac, Windows, and Linux, and you don't need any drivers. Uh, so there's no reason why you couldn't actually also use this with your tablet or your phone if it's got a USB-C port. And there's a decent spread of ports on the device. We've got a total of three USB Type-A ports, each one capable of 10 gigabit per second speeds. Most people would refer to these as USB 3.1. Uh, there's also a USB Type-C port, and that can be used to attach a USB-C device or to connect your USB-C charger. It supports full USB power delivery with support for up to 100 watts. Uh, the hub will pass through power to the host computer so you can actually charge your laptop through this port, uh, and that's pretty neat. At this end of the device, we've got a one gigabit RJ45 ethernet port, and that's a nice thing to have. Uh, just a shame that it couldn't have been a two and a half gigabit port. I tend to carry around this uh, separate two and a half gigabit adapter, and it would have been nice to have been able to replace that as well with this one device. Of course, we've got the usual uh, SD card and micro SD card reader built in. Uh, you can't use both simultaneously, it's one or the other, and it's type one rather than the faster type two. We've got an HDMI port here, which is capable of 4K UHD resolution at 60 hertz, although for some reason it's labeled as HD on the hub. Uh, and just an important point to note, this is an MST hub, so your computer needs to be able to support DisplayPort 1.2 or greater in order for that HDMI port to work. We've then got a 3.5mm audio jack, which supports both input and output, so you can use one of those wired headsets with a microphone. And lastly, we've got another USB-C port, which you use to connect the hub to your computer with the supplied Type-C cable. And that then brings us to the SSD support. Uh, you can use M key or B and M key drives in four different sizes, 22 by 80, 60, 42, or 30. I bought a Crucial P2 one terabyte SSD to go with this hub. Now, of course, the P2 is not the fastest NVMe drive out there, but there isn't any point in putting a faster drive in this hub because the speed will always be limited by the USB-C connection. And I'll come back to that in a moment, but first, let's take a look at installing that SSD. And it's just one screw here on the back to remove the panel and gain access to that M2 slot. Installing the drive was relatively straightforward. Oroco include two retaining screws, which is handy if you lose one, and you'll need to be careful with that, that you don't lose one inside the hub itself. Uh, mine had a plastic cover on one of the mounting points for some reason, and so I had to screw through that. Um, not as easy as it could have been. There's a sticky thermal transfer pad included, although I'm not convinced it's thick enough to actually make a decent contact between this P2 drive and the case itself. And a thicker pad might improve the heat transfer and cooling of the drive. SSDs like these do get very hot. But the hub itself is made from machined aluminium, and it has this heatsink style design to it. And given the size of it, it should be able to do a pretty decent job. Now let me come back to the connection speed. This is a USB-C hub supporting a maximum theoretical transmission rate of 10 gigabits per second. There are eight bits in a byte, so that's the same as 1.25 gigabytes per second. 
and in reality there will be some overhead, so the actual maximum speed will be a little less, and hence why there's no point in buying the fastest SSD to go inside. The Crucial P2 is supposedly capable of 2.4 gigabytes per second peak speed, so of course it's going to be bottlenecked anyway by the USB connection. And herein then is the problem with hubs like this. It's all well and good having three type A ports and one type C port on the hub that are all supposedly capable of 10 gigabit speeds. Uh, but if the hub is connected to your computer via a single 10 gigabit connection, then your total bandwidth is 10 gigabits per second. Now factor in your display output and ethernet, and in this case, an SSD, and you can start to see why that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, a hub like this really needs to be Thunderbolt. And in fact, Oracle do make a Thunderbolt version. But let's start a Blackmagic disk speed test with this hub, and it's connected via HDMI to an external screen. As you can see, the Crucial P2 inside the hub is not maxing out the connection, but it is running at a pretty decent speed, uh, broadly equivalent to a Samsung T7 external drive. Uh, something to bear in mind is that I'm testing on the M1 Max MacBook Pro, where we know that USB performance is still a little subpar, so I'd expect to see slightly higher speeds on a PC. But still, this is very usable performance for pretty much any workflow. Uh, now let's plug in a Samsung T5 USB drive to the hub, and we'll start a copy to that drive, and we'll also run Blackmagic Disk Speed Test again on the Crucial P2 inside the hub. Uh, the SSD in the hub slows down, so you get the point hopefully. It's useful to have all of these extra ports, and it's great that they're high performance ports, but if you're using the internal SSD, you won't get full speed from the ports, and if you're using more than one of the ports at full speed, well, you won't get full speed because you're limited by that single connection to the computer. Now, as I said, Oracle do make a Thunderbolt version of this hub, but obviously that is more expensive. This CDH9N is £120 before discounts, or about $135, and I paid £74 for the Crucial SSD. Add that together, and it's a little more expensive than buying a separate hub and a Samsung T7 drive, but there's not a lot in it. So, my verdict? I've been using this hub for a few weeks now, and it's been a solid performer. Uh, I think it's well made, it's a good quality device, and I think the price is fair, especially with the discounts that you can find online. And if you've got a spare SSD drive lying around already, well, it gets even better. Now, provided you understand the limitations, you might find that this is a great addition to your laptop bag. And there are some links in the description if you want to try one out. Uh, thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you again soon for some more geekery.